All right, guys, what's up? We're still over here at TKM. If you didn't see the other video, we talked about top fuel hoops. Go check that video out. Today, we're going to be talking about roller thrust and what that is and what's happening with it. We're over here with Kevin Mullins. Check it out, guys. We're still on the table. We're still here with Kevin. This is going to be two different videos, though, because we've got two different topics. So we're out here on Saturday morning. That's why it's kind of quiet in the shop here. There ain't nobody here but me and Kevin. Appreciate him meeting me out here. So uh, roller thrust bearing. Uh, Y'all saw on my last video, I was at the track. We were about to race in a $25,000 uh, race, and uh, I noticed I had a problem. So <laughs> we decided to take the motor out. Wanted to do a roller thrust bearing system. Kevin, what is a roller thrust system in a race car? Exactly what you said, roller bearing. Most of the time, this is typically to aid the factory thrust bearing. Okay. Now, this case here, John, you're, you're quite special. I mean that with love. <laughs> but, you know, in this case, I don't know if you shared this with your with the viewers or not. Basically, what you had and what got tore up in your situation is your thrust bearing, right? Yep. So, you know, it ate into this thrust. It, it actually ate your crank up, which is obviously not good. Um, what happens is, though, it's, it you know, your converter, something behind has shoved this thing forward. Now keep in mind, um, we was talking about a second ago, your engine, your explosion, all your events on top is trying to shove the crank down. Right. Not forward. There's That's nothing right. in the motor that can shove the crank forward. Everything's right. pushing it down. It's trying to blow it out. You, you're trying to run over top of your crank. That's why when you look at rod bearings, it's the upper bearing that gets beat out first, it gets squashed. <clears throat> Right. And then even on the caps, the, the, the bearing in the cap is the one that usually starts showing wear before the one in the block. Right. Well, in your thrust, you know, its job obviously is to locate the crank in the block horizontal. Right. All right. So if it's always this side, and the reason why is because converter is pushing this thing forward. It's trying to shove it out the front of your block. All right. And obviously in this case, you know, you got, you know, John, even, you know, this is really common here. It's really smart, actually. Um, you know, you've done a little extra oil groove here. That way oil comes out your block into this channel. will go up and obviously oil in here, but it'll go up here, this little extra bit of oil, and we'll come over and that aid in extra oil on your thrust side. All that's good. And honestly, I would still even, well, I don't know if they'll do it in this case, but I, we still do that right. in, in, in most cases, in motors we build here in house too. Right. Um, but now, now what's going to happen is, you got, we're gonna have a new thrust bearing, of course. It'll be in here, and then we'll have our roller thrust. And what we've done, and what we do here, is we'll machine the crank, and we'll machine the block, okay? And what we're gonna do is set this roller bearing system in there, and it will simply go essentially like that. That way you have a race on both sides of the roller. Now, the crank in this groove here is gonna hold Half, right. and then this guy here will be encapsulated in this. Now we've machined this to where, in this case, because John John's crank is, is tore up, when I set this up the other day, it had 23 thousandths of thrust, even with your with a new bearing. Right. It was obviously too much. Right. But what we do is we're gonna run this roller in here, and pretty much it's gonna rely solely off this roller to keep this crank in where it needs to be. And with the roller bearing and a new thrust bearing, we're gonna have two thousandths of thrust. we set up a little tighter than typical. Um, but this guy here will not even be touching. Now keep in mind, John's special, everybody loves him. Um, so we're gonna run it like that. But typically what we do is we'll set it up to where it can still use the factory thrust as well as this. Right. It, you know, it'll kind of catch them both close in time. In other right. words, when it's, it's just on- gonna support the factory. Right, you, right. If, you, if you think about in this particular application in your motor, you know, like I said before, we got 23 thousandths of thrust without this guy. Right. When we put this guy in here, we have two thousandths. Right. So that means we got 21 thousandths before it would ever touch this. Right. Which it ain't never gonna do that. Right. And that's what, so essentially what we're doing, the thrust bearing, you can see how small this surface is here. And it is all 100%, this is just an H hardened bearing, but it just rides right in here. And so this is the one, this is what we were feeling the other day at the, at the track. 
And so this is typically what we've done in the past, and I've had it done. You weld this crank up, you send it to the crank guy, um, they TIG weld it up, put some surface on here, and then machine it back down. And ideally, that's what you would do. But there, but this is basically just going to take the place of this. So now all the pressure is going to be on the front here on this roller bearing, and it's just not going to eat up yep. the actual crankshaft. Right. And that's what we we've been talking about torque converter. You know, it's funny. Um, you know, back in the day when thrust bearings started become a problem, it was it was turbo cars. Oh, uh, you don't ever have hardly thrust problems in nitrous cars or blower cars because they come up on the converter so fast. And I think that's one of the things, but also converter technology, these things are locking up tight. We talk about uh, torque converter pressures and line pressures and different manufacturers, they have more pressure inside the converter, even though outside the converter in the transmission, they don't read real high, right. but it is literally like a hydraulic ram. There's some old YouTube videos from back in the day, somebody stuck a, a camera up under the car and just revving it and you can see the converter. It's not ballooning, that used to be the terminology. It's pushing, it's like a right. hydraulic ram. So this is the solution. The roller thrust bearing is the solution to give you support so you don't kill the factory style thrust bearing. And really it's any family, I mean, typically, I have to say probably small block Ford is the worst. Oh, is it? I, I, I would say. Right. Um, you know, small block Ford, we do probably more of them than any of them or any other family. But we do them in Coyotes, big block Chevrolets, Hemis. I mean, we, we do it in everything. Right. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, nonetheless, it, it's definitely a system that works. It works great. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, something like this, it's almost a half to. You know, I've got a lot of passes last year. I probably got 150 passes and I hadn't put bearings in it. And, you know, I changed the stator in my converter and we made the converter tighter. Yep. So all those things contribute. And, you know, you don't ever, I mean, it's never, it's not the crank's fault. It's not the engine's fault. It's not the torque converter's fault. It's our fault because we're trying to go fast. I mean, we're constantly trying to go faster. So anytime you try to go faster, you find the next weak link. And then you have to come up with a solution to fix that weak link. Yeah, then, you know, with, with that, you, you know, these guys, and I don't know what they're doing in these converters, I'm not talking bad, they're fast, they're right? Awesome. That's I, right. It's really, I'm, I'm patting them on the back when I say this. Right. But for whatever reason, it's pushing this thing harder, we're making more and more power, so this is going to keep you from missing your next round like John. <laughs> right, <laughs> missing the next round, that's right. Um, so I, I'm excited, man. So roller thrust bearing stuff, there's not a lot of people that can do it. Um, Kevin is one of the shops that can do it, so he, him and his team up. If y'all are interested in going to the roller thrust bearing, I'm I'm really excited to. I mean, you know, this with the top fuel hoops and the roller thrust. I mean, yeah. I should be good to go. Man, I hope so. Now, and, and the next thing, you know, once this is done, <clears throat> obviously there's no maintenance to this. You had, you talked about maintenance with hoops earlier, right? What I would do though, if you do pull the motor down to freshen it, just you know, put a new bearing stack in it. All right, we, gotcha. we, we have them here. We always keep hundred of them. Oh, know, that's so. a good idea. But because I, they do crush some, it's they, going to wear do, out the it, it's hard it steel. A, but it is a roller bearing, and, right? You know, I would definitely replace it. I wonder what the difference. It'd be a good good test to see what kind of like load this could hold versus like that, like a standard bearing. I mean, it's probably a hundred times more load. It would have to be. I mean, it's got to be. <laughs> I mean, because that's just metal to metal, and you know that right there is a roller bearing. I mean, roller bearings are always good. Yep. It's crazy. All right, guys, I'm super excited. This is freaking awesome. We'll be putting this thing back together in the next week or so. Appreciate it, Kevin. Thank you again. Thank you. Later.